It is your founding father, Alex Cooper, with Call Her Daddy. Cole Sprouse. Yes. Welcome to Call Her Daddy. Thank you for having me. Considering how private you are, I'm so happy that you're here because I'm excited for people to get to know you a little bit better. Maybe even have you talk about some things that you've never talked about before. Sure. Let's okay. go. Okay. Let's get into it. No, I, I, I will say um, I really like how conversational your podcast is. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And I think that I think that that's missing a lot from the publicity space, that Mm. there's like this curation that I believe uh, does a tremendous disservice to actual guests on something. And and the conversational nature of just the podcast space in general, but particularly yours, is really refreshing. My publicists are obviously not here. Cole showed up alone. They they rarely they know that they have very, very little control over the lunacy that Uh that whatever happens on on set. So they're like, okay, dude, he's just going to be this whirling dervish. We might as well just let him go. I will say I love it because I've had people show up here with 20 people. And then I've had people like you that show up alone. This is what I prefer. I show up to a lot of things alone. Were you like nervous showing up here at all? Um, I was nervous because my girlfriend was like, hey, this, uh, this she's going to pepper you with some really interesting questions. But that's kind of it. Shout out to Cole's girlfriend. We love you for giving him a little bit of a taste of what he's about to get on Call Her Daddy. OK, so let's get into it. Let's go back to kind of the beginning. Mm. You and your twin brother, Dylan, were born in Italy. Yes. Why were your parents in Italy and when did you move to the United States? Uh, My parents were teaching out there at the time. They Mm -hmm. were part of this school slash cult. I can't really figure out what it was. Um, But my father was teaching physical education and my mother was an art teacher and we were living in Tuscany and we were just born out there because it was romantic and sexy and... And then we, I mean, we moved when we were very young. We ended up moving to Switzerland and then my parents got a divorce and my mother moved us back to the U.S. to like Studio City, uh, between Studio City and Long Beach. And that's when we started acting, uh-huh. acting. Okay. Twins are a lot. Mm-hmm. Have your parents ever talked to you about how hard it was in the beginning? Like, were they ready to be parents and ready for No, no, no. My father got a vasectomy immediately after he found out he was having twins. Okay. okay. Yeah. And they shared that with you? Oh, yeah. My father and I have a very good relationship. He's very open about all that stuff. So you and Dylan booked your first acting gigs before you were even one year old. Yeah. With diaper commercials. What did your parents explain to you as to like why you were auditioning so young? Well, my mother needed an income. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's two. I, I think there's two types of kids within you know, the child acting business. There's like the thespian children that choose to do it. And then there's the working class kids that, mm. that in our case, at least, um, twins are a great labor exploit because babies can only work for a certain amount of hours. So you double the time if you have two of them that look identical. Um, so it was, I mean, it started really as a means to put bread on the table and um, also allow my mother at the same time to be a mother Mm. Um, but to make her main focus and her job our careers. I mean, it made me think kind of of like Mary Kate and Ashley. I, it's a great example. Yeah. Sure. Cause like, obviously I remember on full house, it was like, you can just swap in each kid when it's like, Oh, you you're up on, what is it? Like five hours you can work or something at I uh, even less. I mean, every year it gets a little, uh, a little bit more, but in most cases a baby can only work like an hour or two hours. When you think about that, like you as a kid being like pushed. I wasn't conscious until this last year, so please oh. go ahead. <laughs> Cole's like, I don't even I know don't, where I am. I don't I remember am. fucking breakfast, so. <laughs> no, it is crazy because I, I do, I was like thinking about that of like the child labor laws of how you have a better way to monitor. I too often think of child labor laws, mm-hmm. yes. And how do you feel about that, Cole? I mean, to be honest, I, I, I get a lot of people uh, asking me like, oh man, you really went through the gamut. Oh man, all this. But in very many ways, it was like you know the golden ticket from Willy Wonka. It, it was a, it was a really, it was a great means to. Uh, Please have your cigarette. Okay. You know what, Gold? Let's open the door. I don't know. People get people are all cool about. It's fine. Everyone's smoking weed in like a studio, but and not a fucking like, cigarette. Can I have tobacco, and everyone gets like this. It's fine. It's fucking fine. I'm curious. Mm. Did you even go to like elementary school? I did. Um, it was off and on. 
we it was in between jobs mainly uh, but most of my younger curriculum was homeschooled which is okay. great because to be honest i did not feel like i missed out on much everyone that talks to me about their high school experience i was like this sounds fucking horrible it wasn't great it wasn't yeah. great cole but i'm wondering do you remember when you were in elementary school like how did people treat you because i know you weren't famous famous but like mm. big daddy you were what five yeah, six. And when we were kids, I don't think they really cared too much. Some of them knew that we were actors, but Dylan and I, uh, Dylan specifically, was a huge bully. So our navigation through elementary school and middle school, we were like fucking dicks. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I mean, how would he bully people? <laughs> uh, he would beat them up. He would beat him up. And then I became known as the twin that would come up and be like, I'm so sorry for my brother. Wait, I kind of feel like that was your character also on um, Zach and And Cody. Well, I think... I think the writers on Zach and Cody took a lot of cues from, uh, from, you know, our actual personalities. But, um, yeah, he was was a real bully. (laughs) And... Your brother would be like, what the fuck? Thanks, Cole. <laughs> oh, no, I say this all. Everyone knows that he's And he, a he's fine yeah. with it. Uh, I don't know if he's fine with it. Mm-hmm. I think he's still got some stuff to work out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. So how are the two of you different in personality? Like, if people don't you know you, they just know your on-screen personalities. What is the difference personality-wise? My brother's a lot more stubborn. Um, I would say pig-headed as his brother, but... Uh, he is very much a natural leader. Like he, he, a lot of people respect his opinion because he goes into his opinions incredibly boldly mm-hmm. where I, I will sort of tiptoe and, and sense the room. And, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. We're, we're very, very different. And I think most twins get, uh, more distinct as time goes on, mm-hmm. but, uh, we're still best friends. I mean, he lives like 10 minutes from me. Mm-hmm. So, Do you guys talk every day? Every day. Yeah, every day. It's very cute. Very cute. I mean, when I moved to Vancouver for Riverdale, it was probably, it was probably the biggest amount of distance we've ever had between each other. And we felt it, man. Really? It was sad. I, it was genu- It genuinely made me upset. So back to <laughs> what you were saying about your parents split when you were how old? Ooh, I mean, mm, I think before a year, yeah. Okay. I only have one memory of them still together, for sure. What is that memory? Oh, it was me riding on the back of uh, my mother's bike um, in the little baby seat uh, in Switzerland. And there we were down this little bike path because, you know, Europeans love that shit. And uh, there were ass 